Hi, welcome to the session. Today we're going to look at the theme song for BBC's Taboo and how to recreate that in Logic Pro X. TV has amazing shows right now with amazing theme songs and Taboo is one of them. It's a really simple arrangement, but it's got some vibe to it. Let's have a look. So here's our project for the theme song for Taboo. And it's pretty simple as you can see. There are not many tracks involved. Um, and it's two repetitions of the same pattern at 110 BPM. So let's have a listen. So that is the track, and um, let's get into it. So the opening instrument, you can see, is a glockenspiel. So under orchestral tune percussion, glockenspiel. And uh, it's quite bright. The Logic version of it is pretty bright. So um, what we did was we just took out all the high end in an EQ and send it to a reverb and in this case we picked large spaces halls prince hall one pretty nice reverb for this send quite a bit of it and um this is how it sounds that's the rhythm section of it quantize it to one eighth but the strength is only 60%. And I'll kind of explain why later. And this is the melody section of the Glockens Pale. Uh, we used a different track for it because then we can control the relative volumes of the rhythm and the uh, melody. Same thing, same instrument, same EQ, same bus, uh, just slightly different levels. As you can see, this is slightly softer, this is slightly louder, and this is how it sounds. You can see some of it is kind of out of time. Uh, although we quantize it to 1 8 with a strength of 50%, I purposefully pushed some of the melodic lines off, off the track a little bit because it sounds better for instruments like this to have a little bit of offset. Uh, just have a listen. So it's better to have the kind of like Rather than them playing the exact note at the same time, it sounds really mechanical. And this has that music box feeling to it. So it's nice to sort of push notes around to get the right feel. And that's the whole pattern for this, which turns out is the exact same pattern in the second bit, except that the other instruments come in. And these are all the string, orchestral string instruments. So let's uh, have a look. The first one, is under orchestral strings, basis pizzicato. And it's just a bass pizzicato like this. Um, it tends to be common for arrangements like that to have a bass pizzicato. It works really well. And you can see that the quantized strength is also not perfect. So. What we want to do with all these orchestral uh, parts is not to quantize it too hard, but enough to sort of make it um, sound good. And then we have an EXS strings 2 here. 
I picked EXS strings because it has this mellow sound about it that worked better than the other strings. So it's this section here. So this counter melody, right, is um, playing really, really soft because I find that the samples on EXS string 2 at this soft section has that nice legato feeling about it. So I picked EXS strings 2. And you can see there's uh, a little bit of automation right at the end, but we'll get into the other string ensemble automations later on. Now, we have a string ensemble, and that's basically under orchestral strings, string ensemble, and that's playing sort of like a cluster of uh, pretty close notes. So you can sort of feel it breathe a little bit, go up, go down, go up, go down, and a little bit of dynamics here. And that's really important for sort of like string, sort of uh, long string lines that are fairly close together. And um, that sort of gives it that string section. We don't have to separate it into the whole like, you know, violin, violas, cellos here. I think whatever works is the way it works best. So if you put just the strings together, and essentially, I paired it with a choir under orchestral choir, mixed choir, and I just pulled the string ensemble track down here. So it's playing the same thing as the string ensemble, and here's how it sounds. So that breathing that you hear is also from the automation that you have. And so that's why this kind of, I would call it pad style instruments, um, the automation is really important. So I'll give it some life about it. And at the very intro, when the strings come in, there's this high violins that sound like this. A bit like a breathing type thing as well because we bring it in and then we take it out. And it's under strings, violins, one legato. That sounds pretty okay. It's not too harsh. I added a bit of gain plugin and added 1.5 dB of gain because I felt after the automation I needed some adjustment of volume. So that's how you do that with automation. There are other ways to do it. I find that this is the simplest one for me. And um, that's how the violin sounds when it comes in. Here's how it sounds. And that's pretty straightforward. But notice at the end, if you open up this, press this little button here, you see the tempo. Now the tempo has um, sort of a curve over here. So if you press T and open up the tempo meter, you'll see that there are different tempos at different sections. You can always create a new tempo by pressing plus. So that creates one of these colored dots here. And you can actually adjust the numbers here, or you can just pull them up or down here. So you can see that these slow down from 110 to 84, so how, here's how it sounds. And then it slows down. So you could even drag it even more if you wanted that kind of uh, writ kind of feeling, kind of slow down. The great thing is you can still work with the bars and you can muck around with the tempos to get the exact feelings that you want. So you can actually just uh, pull these lines back or move the little curves around. 
um, it's up to you. So it's fun to play with, uh, get the project and play around with it and see how you like playing around with tempo. And that's about it for this track. I hope you learned something useful today, like how to use time maps and automation to breathe more life into a song. If you want a project, you can download it at the link below. And if you like this video, please subscribe for more. See ya.